so let's discuss what you came up with when you wrote that parallel pi program using the loops construct. So this is the serial version of the program that we started with. At this point, you're probably getting sick of it, but it's just a simple loop over, uh, over the, the, the integrand as we compute the area of all these rectangles in there. And here's all I had to do to create a parallel version of it using the, uh, the for construct in OpenMP. So I have to create my parallel region, pragma OMP parallel. Uh, that should look very familiar. But now I'm not going to do that fancy SPMD trick. So instead of getting the ID and, and doing a cyclic distribution and all that other crud with the sum array variable, all that crud, I just declare my, my X. You know, I still have to declare variables on the stack that need to be local to the thread. So pragma OMP parallel, then I can uh, create that array, uh, I'm sorry, I create that element X as the double. Then I do pragma OMP four with the reduction clause, and that reduction is going to be over the plus, and then the colon sum to say that it's the operator is plus, and the variable is sum. Now, I'm using the fact that by default, the loop index variable i will be local to each thread. So notice I didn't have to create a copy of i for each thread. But if you did, that's perfectly OK. But you didn't need to. So now each thread is going to do some portion of that loop. I didn't put a schedule clause, so I just said, you know what, compiler, eh, you know, whatever you do I'm happy with is good enough. And then I use the reduction at the end to combine all the sums. And then after the loop, I take that global sum and multiply it by this step to get my value of pi. So pretty darn easy way to parallelize this program. A lot easier to the ways we've done uh, all along the way, you know, with the SPMD. In fact, some of my colleagues who also like to teach and talk about OpenMP, they start with this version of the program because they're trying to tell people, look how easy it is, and they're right. But my problem is all of that stuff you went through with the SPMD version of this program gave you a solid impression for what's actually happening at the thread level. It gave you a better understanding of how the synchronization works and how synchronization ties sometimes to values local to a thread or values global to a thread. So I'm convinced, pedagogically, I kind of like to build up to this as the big crescendo of look how powerful and wonderful this is. Now when I run this program, here are the results I got. And you can see that the version with the loop does pretty much as well as my best of the, uh, the Pi SPMD. You know, I got a nice speed up along the way. I got a little bit more overhead of, off the start that the uh, version with one thread run at 1.9 seconds instead of 1.83. But uh, in terms of the speed ups, it did a pretty good job as I added the additional threads. So the performance was nice as well. Now, as I want to close with loops, I want to mention just a wee little bit else about this. When I look at parallel loops between loops, so I have a parallel loop, I close that off, then I go to another parallel loop. This is what I end up with. Now, I'm kind of pulling a little stunt on you here as well in the code I'm showing you, but I wanted somewhere in this discussion to show you what Fortran looks like in OpenMP. So if you look at this code we have right here, for Fortran, I don't have pragma. That's very C and C++ like. In Fortran, what I have are these structured comments called directives. And so I use, for those of you who are the Fortran programmers, an exclamation point, um, or C is a capital letter in column one. Those define a comment. So exclamation point dollar OMP is, is the same thing as in C as the pound pragma OMP. So this says this comment is actually a compiler directive in OpenMP. In Fortran, the loop is called do, not for. So it's, you know, it's a bang dollar OMP do. And then I have the schedule clause static. And what the most recent versions of OpenMP do is they guarantee that this code works in that the way you map one schedule static onto another will be the same. All right, that's what this shows you. So that I can depend on the iterations from one loop being the same when I go to the following loop. Now, another thing is we can do is, is I can do um, the schedule runtime, which I hinted at before. Now, the way this would work is imagine you want to try many different schedules to see which one is best. And you can go ahead and do this, okay? Go into your, parallel pi program where you use the loop 
and add a clause schedule runtime. Now, before the loop, you know, earlier in the program, go ahead and have OMP set schedule, and then in the argument list, pass it a string that says static or dynamic or whatever schedule you want. You know, or you can check and you can get the schedule to inquire. So that would be OMP get schedule. All right, so these are something you can add and see and try without recompiling. You can just try different schedules in the same program. And then finally, another thing to play with is go ahead and uh, put schedule auto and just see if, the, if you just tell the system, do whatever you think will work, see if you get something better. So it's an easy thing you can try to play around with the schedule. And I want to emphasize that if you really want to master OpenMP, if you really want to finish these series of modules with us that we're doing together, and at the end you really want to be a capable OpenMP programmer, you need to do this kind of play. Take the programs and dink around with them. Try different things out. So I've given you a few things to try here. Play around with them and, uh, and, and see if you can learn a little bit more about which schedules work really well, which schedules work particularly poorly. And, uh, and we'll go on from there. Thank you.